if you're given an enthalpy of vaporization and the vapor pressure of a substance at a certain temperature, you can predict the vapor pressure at any other temperature you want. This is the most common type of question a teacher will give when they're trying to test you about the clausius clapeyron equation. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But do you recognize this formula? The vapor pressure of a substance is some constant times e to the power of negative enthalpy of vaporization over RT. Your teacher may have given it to you in this form, which is the exact same thing, just rearranged. And there's some other constant here, C. We don't call it A because these two numbers aren't exactly the same. More likely, you're familiar with something like this. This is what you get when you combine two of these together so that you can compare two vapor pressures at two different temperatures. And that's exactly what the original question here is asking. They gave you a temperature and vapor pressure, and they want you to calculate the vapor pressure at a second temperature. Easy to identify the question, tougher now to actually use this formula, which is what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So, step one, I guess we have to know what equation we're working with. I'm going to use the ln of P1 over P2 equals uh, the enthalpy of vaporization over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And obviously we have to fill in what we're given. So I'm going to call this my first temp oh, that's definitely a pressure. I'm going to call this my first temperature and this my first pressure, that's P1 and this will be my second temperature. I need to calculate that second vapor pressure. So, the ln of the first pressure, 101.3 kilopascals, and I have to calculate my second vapor pressure. Enthalpy of vaporization, 41,000 joules per mole. Notice I converted kilojoules to joules. The reason I did that is because in my head, the gas constant is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. You can look that up on your data sheet probably. Then 1 over the second temperature, the temperature you're looking for the pressure at. That's 298 Kelvin minus 1 over first temperature, 373 Kelvin. All right. Now my units are going to cancel out here. It's joules on top, joules on bottom, moles on bottom, moles on bottom. I got Kelvin on the bottom of my whatever. The Kelvins cancel out. Just trust me on that. Make sure all your temperatures are in Kelvin. Now we got to do this business over here. So whip out the calculator. Can you guys see what I'm typing? Yeah, there we go. 41,000 divided by 8.3145 times, and then in brackets, I'm going to go 1 divided by 298 minus 1 divided by 373. Your calculator should do order of operations for you. And I get uh, 3.3272. 3.3272 is this lawn here. Now I realize some of you may not be all up in the math department, so let me just tell you that when you want to undo this lawn, there's a button on your calculator. Mine is second function lawn. I don't even know if you guys can see, there we go, e to the power of x. To undo ln, you actually need to use e to the power of. Let me show you what I mean. Ln of this equals that. What you do on your calculator is you can drop your ln, and on your calculator you're looking for e to the power of 3.3272. I know it's weird and you may not have even done it in your life, but that's how you undo the lawn. Suck it up. So, on my calculator, I still have my number in there. 
Second function, ln, because that's my e to the power of x button. e to the power of my answer gives 27.861. 27.861. And now I just need to solve for my P2. How do I undo division? It's with multiplication. And then I can divide both sides by 27.861 to cancel it out there. And I get 101.3 divided by that answer I just got. Oh crap. Oh crap. Uh, yeah, saved it. Answer. 101.3 divided by my answer gives 3.64. And my units are kilopascals, because that was the unit I was given at the beginning. Oh, yes. This, I remember, is the vapor pressure of water at room temperature from Wikipedia. So that proves that it works, and I didn't make a math there. Hopefully, you don't either. When you're given the enthalpy of vaporization and the vapor pressure at a certain temperature, you can calculate the vapor pressure at another temperature by using that formula. Plug in your numbers, remember to undo ln with e to the power of, and solve for your pressure. Done. Best of luck.